now like to call upon the representative from the business and industry uh, major group and she no, needs no further introduction but her name is Marietta Elieta who comes from a farming family in northern Finland and she completed her BA in history at, and of science at Howard University an MS in crop production with a minor in environmental protection at the University of Helsinki and a PhD in agronomy with a minor in food resource and economics at the University of Florida. Um, she's been as an international fertilizer development center and she has worked in the United States as a senior soil fertility expert and an African fertilizer summit advisor. And since 2006, uh, been based in Accra, Ghana as the agribusiness program leader and is currently as the interim director for the IFDC's North and West African Division. Marietta. Thank you very much. And uh, I do want to point out I'm here to represent IFDC. It's an international uh, public organization working on particularly fertilizer issues, but in general also agricultural development with a very strong focus on Africa. And uh, today I would like to highlight the current situation with input access, with a special focus on fertilizers in sub-Saharan Africa, just like my, uh, the, the former speaker did. And this is really an example of how smallholder farmers today lack the fundamental resources which they need to manage their farms to make them profitable and sustainable. Today, sub-Saharan African farmers use on average only eight kilograms of nutrients per hectare of cropland that they are farming. This is about less than one-tenth of what farmers elsewhere use on average. And this results not only in poor productivity, but also mining of nutrients from the soil, which endangers future productivity. As most of that eight kilograms per hectare, that is the average used in sub-Saharan Africa, is used on plantation crops, very little fertilizer, and in many cases, and most cases, no fertilizer at all is used on those fields where grains, roots, and tubers, which really form the basis of food security for most in sub-Saharan Africa. And those are also the crops that most farmers in sub-Saharan Africa sell to get that extra cash that they so badly need. Current fertilizer markets in sub-Saharan Africa are underdeveloped and fragmented. Farmers often have to travel great distances to buy expensive fertilizer that may be of poor quality or not, not of the appropriate type. These fertilizers are not always available at a time when she or he would be needing them. For example, when we look at average fertilizer prices in uh, Tanzania, which is a coastal East African country, those fertilizer prices for the farmer are on average 50% higher than they are in Thailand. If we go to landlocked countries, for example, Mali in West Africa, average fertilizer prices are about 80% higher than in Thailand. You can imagine the poverty in Africa, how it is that these farmers can, can afford the fertilizers. But as the former speaker pointed out, this is not a simple issue necessarily of how it is that we can solve the fertilizer problem in Africa. Impediments to greater fertilizer use act at all levels, from farmers to importers, and range from unfavorable policy environment to limited human capital among all actors often in that fertilizer value chain. From those who might be doing the procuring of the fertilizer to those that are selling it, and finally to farmers who are using that little bit of fertilizer that they are. Most of these actors in the fertilizer value chain also lack access to sufficient credit and do not have the market information needed to make wise choices in terms of procuring fertilizer or buying of fertilizer. And finally, in many countries, regulatory frameworks are lacking 
that would allow the governments to control the fertilizer quality of market, which results in poor profitability of fertilizer use and often disgruntled farmers. Farmers might be buying, thinking it is 15, 15, 15 NPK, and they are getting something that is totally different. And the total nutrient content of what they are getting is much less than they thought that they would be getting. And many, many countries in sub-Saharan Africa lack, for example, fertilizer laws, thereby making it difficult to prosecute even those who are selling fertilizers of poor quality. At the same time, we are very hopeful that there is now the will and the efforts to start changing this. In the African Fertilizer Summit, which was held in 2006 in Abuja, African leaders committed to increasing fertilizer use to 50 kilograms per hectare by 2050. The Abuja Declaration that resulted from this meeting affirmed that fertilizer is crucial for achieving the African Green Revolution. This Abuja Declaration also outlines numerous actions that are needed to increase fertilizer access among Africa's farmers, including elimination of taxes and tariffs on fertilizer, which is often a, a, quite an issue in many of these countries and regions, including in West Africa, encouragement of fertilizer production and blending in the region. For example, Africa currently has about 65% of the phosphate resources of the world, but there are very few facilities for production of phosphate fertilizers. Development and scaling up of uh, agro-input dealer networks, establishment of financing facilities, and targeted support for those farmers that really need the fertilizer and need the support before they can improve their productivity. So that was the, the, the Abuja Declaration and there are many follow-up efforts at the moment that are really trying to tackle these issues and we are hopeful that we will be making progress. But as we are working to build this greater access to fertilizer in Sub-Saharan Africa, I would like to share three lessons with you that guide us in finding sustainable solutions to the fertilizer access. The first lesson is that improving the supply systems for fer fertilizer, it is necessary, but simultaneous efforts are also needed to ensuring appropriate and profitable use and sufficient demand. Farmers' demand for fertilizer will only increase if farmers have access to profitable output markets. Farmers seldom use fertilizer only on subsistence crops. Fertilizer demand is a derived demand, so we really need to even, however much our focus might be on fertilizer, we do need to always be working on the output market side. Second lesson, support the people, not the product. Although targeted subsidies can and should be provided to the poorest farmers, they should always be built to foster private supply of fertilizer, for example, through vouchers, as was highlighted by the previous speaker, and by encouraging links to agro-input dealers. Finally, promote multi-country markets. At the moment, most African countries have very small fertilizer markets. The, one of the surest ways of bringing the price down is to create markets across the regions. That requires harmonization of policies on fertilizer use at the regional level, development of regulatory systems in all of these countries so that fertilizers that are there can go from one country to another, and finally, removing of the tariffs and non-tariffs obstacles for fertilizer movement within regions. Thank you very much. <laughs>